I guess they wanted to uncover or cover up the unsightly block wall with just a mismatched textured smear of concrete. So to each their own. So good morning, welcome back to Boisterous Cock Farmstead. Uh, I am actually here by myself. Uh, the last couple weeks, our son has had really, really bad uh, night screaming fits. And uh, since I'm the one that actually um, takes care of him at night, um, that's led to me not having a whole lot of sleep lately. So my wife is feeling well enough after her surgery that she is actually staying in town at my mom's place. And um, so that means that I got to sleep for 10 hours last night, which was awesome and well uh, needed and appreciated. But still a little tired, but I'm uh, since I am by myself, I'm gonna start doing some stuff around the house, which I haven't been able to do here for a few weeks uh, because of my wife's surgery on her gallbladder and uh, she's doing well couple couple small things but uh, overall doing well doctor said she's healing up really well so uh, I wanted to go over what I was working on and one of them is right here uh, there was an old piece of plate uh, bottom plate here and I removed that and added the, the same space on top here. When I had framed this in, I framed it in based on, framed the rough opening based on what this, with that two by four being down there. And with removing that, so that that bottom uh, ledge is gonna be the same throughout here. If you go look at this side here, there is a step up. This is a separately poured section here in this room uh, here and the bathroom is also separately poured and there is a hump in the center of this room that eventually i will have to cut it down uh, chip it down grind it down to prepare for the tile that will go in here but it is within the margin of error for the drywall because there's going to be a half inch space at least a half inch space on the bottom of the drywall uh, so anything that i need to do with that is not going to be interrupted so i actually hung my first sheet of drywall in this room here and um, got that lined up along this wall so over on this side eventually uh, i'll need to put some spacers in the top area here to match this bottom block wall whatever that needs to be so that it's relatively flat across the way I don't think I'm gonna get it perfect. So that's not exactly what I'm looking for, but get it close enough to where there's not big humps in the wall or anything like that. And some of it I can smooth out with, um, with doing the mud work. And then once that is in, I think I'm gonna wait and put this piece in last. But I started with here so that I can actually move around the room now that i know how i'm going to attach this drywall here i'm actually going to cut out this old piece that was really uh beat up and had a hard time um connecting this up there uh, you can see i kind of screwed it together but there's basically there's a void in the back of the wall there so i'm going to pull that piece off and take a look at it from both sides and see if there's any filler that I need to put in there, nailer filler that I need to put in there uh, so that I have something to, to attach to, or if it's just gonna be floating in that corner and then the drywall along this side will just butt up against it and, and keep it from being uh, moved around too much. 
or I might even just go all the way across from this side and notch it at the top and actually have the drywall go back in a little bit. I'll have to see what my spacing looks like and everything. Um, but that could be a possibility as well. Won't know until I actually tear into that. So the goal today is at the very least to get the drywall up in this room and potentially get the drywall up along this side of this wall as well. Now that I've got this all squared away and I know exactly where my timbers are gonna be, I can uh, put the drywall in and I'm not worried about putting that door in. I may have to trim about a quarter inch, quarter to a half inch off the bottom of that door uh, when all is said and done. We'll have to see um, once we get there. But um, that would be nice visually to actually have all the drywall across this wall here. And um, I'm not too concerned about getting all the drywall on the inside of this closet if I have containment there. But the idea is I have everything except for and granted, when I say all the drywall in here, I'm not talking about over the block wall necessarily um, right now. But I wanna get it over this area here so that I can put some plastic up there. And when I'm chipping, grinding, whatever, all the dust and everything will be contained to this room instead of being you know, forced all throughout the house. Um, so, and I'll probably turn this mini split unit off so it's not trying to circulate. In fact, let me do that now. So it's not trying to circulate dust around. Great thing about this mini split system is actually one, all you need is one remote to actually go through. And cause it's uh, infrared line of sight there. Um, so you can take one remote and go around and, and do all your settings, or you can have different remotes in all the different rooms, which I also have. And then once I have the drywall up, at the very least on this section right here, then I can actually put in my light switch and go ahead and connect those, those uh, pot lights. So I can work in here at, at night. Um, without having to have any kind of extra lighting or anything like that. So that is the plan for today and uh, let's get to it. So, as we can see, this is just loose mortar. That was just a, basically a placeholder. Some of that is still connected to the 
the old wire mesh from the stucco and this is what happens when you've got several several phases of a building that come together over time and uh, decisions that get made and made poorly in many cases. What I'll have to do is I'll have to clean up that old wire mesh, cut it back or bend it back into that uh, gap as best I can. I'm gonna have the same problem on the other side of this wall too once this is cleaned up because we've got this same gap on this side and I haven't removed this wall or this whatever attempt at a skim coat this concrete skim coat that they did um, which I'm not even really sure why they did that but I guess they wanted to uncover or cover up the unsightly block wall with just a mismatched textured smear of concrete so to each their own now that it's mine uh, I'll make my own decisions here. So, I'm gonna put a pin in this one for now, and uh, I'll measure. I'll measure on this side and see where where I want to put a full panel of drywall, and uh, I'll start from there. All right. So, I I knew this at the time that I had been working on this wall before um, but this is not one of the walls that we actually did any work to so this is an original wall and what they've got is they've got a couple splices here and so what I'm gonna be dealing with is I want to make sure that I don't have any drywall hanging off of either side of one of these splices so here's one over here as well so I want to make sure that those are covered so I'll have to have a drywall seam here and a drywall seam over there for a full sheet and then on this side it'll butt up against that one and come all the way across so that'll cover both sides and uh, so that pretty much leaves me with putting a full sheet here all the way over and then I'll just have to deal with that corner um, with you know a small piece like what we had what we already had there and uh we just have to make it work
apologize for the low light. It's getting cloudy outside. But I went ahead and put that piece in the corner um, instead of fitting this one. And one of the reasons is I need to find where my outlet box is and I wanted to have something that was in place rigid. Um, so I'm going to use that side of it. And I'm going to use these magnetic target um, cards. And basically, if you've never used one of these before, what you do is these two little screw holes in here, put these flanges in there, and then these are spring loaded. And you've got the arrow up. And then we put this card on the outside, it'll lock onto those two magnets, and then you trace your box and cut it out with your jab saw. shut off the electric to shut off the breaker to this uh, to the lighting on this side of the house so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna push this back and you measure the width of this piece here and then we'll cut it we'll put it up and what we'll have to do is we'll put a target in this one and in that one once this piece is secured up here and cut those out Put them on there and I might actually go ahead and wire these uh, lights in here because it's so dark outside so I actually have some some decent lighting for the rest of the video so we'll go ahead and do that so we have got almost this whole wall up granted it was only two pieces but anytime you've got to cut these out actually it's three pieces because we've got that skinny piece over there Anytime you have to cut out a box, electrical box, it can cause issues. So we'll pull these out. And I'll just need a skinny piece along there and piece across the top there. So I'll sort through my scrap pieces and see, I'll sort through my scrap pieces and see what, what would be best to put up there. Obviously I'll put that top one up first, but before we go too farther, too much farther, I'm gonna wire this uh, overhead switch in so that we've got some light and I'll be right back. I've got our light switch wired up and let's test it out. Oh, I gotta hook up the breakers. That'll help. Okay, 
Let's try it again. So, I've got our light switch all wired up. So, let's test it out. Ta da! Ta da! So, I actually left this one uh, uninstalled because I wanted to kind of show you guys what these lights look like and how easy they are to install. So this particular brand is Sunco and I bought these on Amazon. I got 16 of them and they were like about $10 a piece. So for the money, um, first off, they're the best lights I've ever installed on any of my properties. For the money, they're like extremely the best lights I've ever installed. And let me show you how they work. So up inside here is a junction box that I had to hardwire in. Now, I don't know, I don't know how easy or if you can even retro fit these. Um, you probably could, although they need some kind of a cross beam to attach to. So you may be limited if it were, if it were something that would be uh, a remodel type light, uh, you may be limited to wherever your, your lumber is, or if you can gain access to the attic, then that'll help too. But if you're just working from underneath, which is how a lot of those lights kind of work, um, you're almost always working with an existing socket or junction box or something like that. So these actually come with a junction box. As you can see, the little black box. And uh, you have your, your cable running in. I've got drywall dust in my nose. You have your you have your Romex cable running in, and if it's the last box that you don't you would just terminate there. If you're going to continue in series with more lights, you would just have your your light running out to wherever your next junction box is going to be mounted. So I mounted these in here a while back. While I was doing the drywall, I just cut the circles in the ceiling wherever I wanted to, and you can see there's a little pigtail that hangs down. And I am live footage I'm going to set you guys up here with me, hopefully. So, you guys still with me? So you can see there's a gasket ring here, a foam, little foam gasket ring. You make sure that that's seated. And one of the great things about this is there's no, there's no uh, raised portion in the back here. So the thickness is actually less than the drywall. The only thing you have to worry about is where your spring clamps are coming up. So you can mount these directly across a, a uh, truss or whatever, as far as how the lighting is, is going to be, as far as whether the lighting is going to be interfered with or not. But all you do is you take this pigtail and you hook it up like that. So that was right in my eyes. Just hook it up just like that and then there's a little sleeve that screws on to make sure that you keep your contact good and then I just kind of twist this a couple times and then get your your spring tabs I'm right up against the truss there Let's try 
this way. Get your spring tabs ready. That one's already in. Flip this one up in there. Make sure my foam gasket is seated around. And then when you're ready, just pop it into place. I usually kind of twist it so that it lets that spring seat itself. Take it down now. And it seats pretty close. I mean, it's like maybe a sixteenth of an inch here and there. This side didn't quite seat as well. Since these actually aren't the final install, I'm gonna to have to take these down again so that I can do the, the uh, mudding and the texture on the ceiling. So I'm not necessarily worried about where they are at the moment, but um, they're in place for now and good enough. And now we've actually got some, some work light in here. So I did actually find a couple scrap pieces and went ahead and screwed those up on there. Um, so the next thing is going to be, I'll, I'll put the, put some scrap pieces along this side and, uh, then we could start working on this section over here. All right. So we got this piece of drywall up the left side of the closet here and there is one issue that I knew was an issue I don't know if this comes up on the camera all that much but this old wall actually is concave it kind of indents right here right to this joint and then comes back out a little bit and so this was this wall was covered up when we did all the roofing and everything like that and I would say this is probably only one of two maybe three instances where if we'd actually torn everything out uh, all the walls and everything like that when we were putting this stuff up um, we could have fixed a couple things but for the most part it didn't really make that big of a difference so what I'm gonna do and you can see right here that angle that's on that drywall piece where it's thinner on this side thicker on this side um, I still have access to that box on the other side I'm gonna try to push that out a little bit but what I'm planning on doing um, if it if it looks like it's gonna be a problem when I mud and tape this joint here I'll just try to spread it out um, probably about two feet on either side or at least 18 inches 12 to 18 inches on either side try to build up just a little bit to make that a less obvious um, indentation but another thing that I wanted to say is one it's I, I highly recommend you keep your scraps on your drywall until you have you know way too many or a lot of the same size pieces because what this this little piece right here was something that was just quote unquote junk it was a it was an off cut from some other piece and it was the exact width that i needed for this rough opening for this door uh, there is a little bit here where the cut wasn't quite on the line uh, so it sticks out a little bit but there's going to be there's going to be somewhat of a gap there for framing in uh, this door right here anyway so that's not going to be a problem and then on this one here this was a little bit wider i had to end up cutting off like a half of an inch so i could have you know i could have cut a piece off of a perfectly good usable piece somewhere else but i didn't have to Secondly on scraps is uh, this piece right here to the right was about 10 inches. I say about 10 inches because there's a little bit difference on the top and the bottom. But I had already done a measurement on this side here and I knew that this was 38 inches. So again, 
I could have cut, I could have just been thinking about this room and I could have cut a 10 inch piece off of a perfectly good piece of, of drywall and not known that that other side needed, got a little closer, uh, and not known that the other side needed to be 38 inches um, and then ended up maybe using that the rest of that piece for that off cut that's down there that's a little bit too wide um, or maybe this piece right here because um, that one I think is like 27 and a half or 28 something like that but I was looking a little bit ahead and granted, you're not gonna always catch these, but when you do, it helps to reduce your waste. So, I cut off the 38 from a full sheet, and voila. We're a little bit narrow at the bottom, but that'll be covered up by trim anyway. So, I'm gonna put some, uh, some one by right here on the inside and then we'll have some trim around the outside here. So little things like that, they'll be covered up anyway. So no big deal. Get this one put in. I'll find a scrap piece for that piece across the top. And then really the only piece that we've got to deal with is this one over on this side. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna put, I'm, not, I'm probably not gonna do that one today because I'm, I'm still not 100% sure how I'm going to navigate this gap here between my block wall and the upper timber framed wall so i have a couple i have a couple different ideas um, some are ripping down two by fours and you know basically building up the wall a little bit shimming it out as you will if you would um, i'm not sure if i'm going to do that or if I'm going to just kind of figure out where my anchor points are gonna be and have a couple different um, spots because really with, this, with the height of this, I really only need to screw at the top and the bottom and uh, here in the middle somewhere. So I could just put like a little spacer there, nail a spacer to those two bys and then it'll just be, it'll have a gap everywhere else and not have to worry about you know building up the exact same piece and to some degree it may be because this outside wall isn't even plumb um, I, I might need to navigate that as well too so that goes for every single uh, location where I've got the block bottom wall uh, and the timber framed upper wall I still need to clean up that old corner over there um, and if, if I haven't already posted this in a previous video, I've got a lot of, at, at the time of this filming, I've got a lot of footage that I need to go through and I'm not sure if I actually talked about this on camera or if I've posted the video, I think I posted the video when I was doing the drywall on the ceiling in here, but what I ended up deciding to do is we're just going to put drywall all the way across these walls here and so all along the bottom here i got some shorter like inch and three quarter um masonry screws so i'll have to pre-drill it once it, once i attach it at the top with the timber frame support that'll just hang down and i'll have everything in place and i could just come through with the with the rotary um or the hammer drill and pre-drill all my holes and drive in the masonry screws. But before I do that, I'm actually going to have to attach those boxes. There's one here and then there's one over here along the same wall. And uh, I left those loose on purpose until I decided how I was going to uh, finish this wall. Because if we were gonna use that block as part of the wall, then I wasn't going to actually, it was gonna be a flush mount. Now it's gonna to have to be a half inch out and secure it. So um, that will be something I'll do. I'll just get some construction adhesive and set those um, before I put up this wall. So that's not gonna to happen today. So the idea is I'll put up 
The this piece cut this this piece out here across the top. I'll be done in this room for today. And then I'll need to put up this piece here. And uh, it's getting pretty windy outside, so I don't know if I'm gonna go uh, grab another piece of drywall out of my truck or not. Uh, but I've already got this one cut. And this will actually, for the most part, close this room in. And I should be able to find scrap pieces for here and for across the top there. But uh, it's not, not a huge concern at this point. So let me get to attaching those. So let's do a quick recap of what we put up today. We got, this was our first piece of drywall. And then we're all around the closet, all around the room door, and over into this weird little corner. And again, that one, I'll have to decide how I'm going to work across that top there, which could be tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna have a part of the day tomorrow by myself. So, for the most part, with the exception of that little piece over there, that room is pretty much closed off. Um, and then we've got this, these two pieces here. So the bathroom, at least from the outside, is closed off. So coming into the bathroom here, I still have to do the back side of this wall. And then it's gonna be the same thing. I have to figure out how I'm gonna navigate this here. Um, so I'll have to work on that. And this piece, is this is gonna get knocked out and replaced, I think, now that I know how I'm gonna do this. Um, it's not that critical until I pull that toilet, which is not gonna be for a while until I'm working on the the floor in here so and then there's going to be the purple board green board mold the mold drywall for in the shower so still quite a bit to do but that is it for today i think and uh as always thanks for joining us uh if you enjoyed watching this video please give us a thumbs up uh, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel uh, and also click the bell notification so that you will be notified when we have future videos like this one and other ones about the animals and things that are going outside, going on outside of the house. So speaking of animals, I'm going to sign off and uh, take care of those guys. So until next time, God bless.